It's official, Tiffany Stratton is the hottest female in the world. Huh? Wait, chill out. This is a wrestling channel and I'm talking about her wrestling. At just 24 years old, Tiffany is catching people's attention and that became apparent at the Elimination Chamber PLE where she was cheered heavily by the Australian crowd. Despite having only a handful of matches on the main roster, it already feels like Tiffany is way ahead of most of the stars in the company. That goes to show you that Stratton has been working hard to achieve mega success in the company and before you know it, she could become women's champion. Too much too soon maybe? In the meantime, let's take a look at how Tiffany has become one of the fastest rising female talents in just three years. Back in 2021, Tiffany Stratton was announced as one of the Performance Center recruits alongside stars like Solo Sukawa and Bron Breaker. Now, straight off the bat, I want to give credit to the Performance Center seemingly finally fulfilling its primary function of preparing NXT talents for the main roster. We all know that once upon a time, NXT flirted with the idea of no longer being developmental and was more interested in being what the streets called NXT Ring of Honor or NXT PWG. The argument of is NXT a third brand or developmental still rumbles on today. However, like I said, it's definitely ticking all the developmental boxes right now. Many of the stars you see on television today won't be where they are without the performance center. People like Bron Breaker and Carmelo Hayes, guys that look like they're already being prepped for the main event of WrestleMania. This goes to show that the Performance Center has done an excellent job in preparing and future-proofing the company's talent pool. Anyway, back to Tiffany Stratton. She was just 21 years old when she joined the Performance Center. She has a gymnastics background and she even competed on the 2016 US national team before coming over to WWE. Despite being so young, Tiffany managed to impress people backstage with her in-ring talent. Consider this. She joined the Performance Center in August 2021 and just three months later, she made her NXT TV debut. It took her only three months to get ready for NXT TV. That's very impressive, at least in my eyes. Tiffany made her debut with the daddy's little rich girl gimmick and acted like this spoilt brat who loved to get her way. While many at the time thought that they'd already seen this gimmick fail several times in the past, the gimmick actually suited Tiffany. Her promos came across as annoying and they fitted her persona perfectly. For the first several months, Tiffany feuded with the likes of Saray and Wendy Chu. While those programs weren't significant, they showed that Tiffany had the potential to at least have great in-ring matches. When she returned from a head injury in early 2023, she stopped portraying the daddy's little rich girl gimmick. Instead, she remained cocky and began portraying this Barbie gimmick that was a bit more realistic and better than what she was doing before. The real fun began at NXT Battleground, where she defeated Lyra Valkyria for the vacant NXT Women's Championship. From then on out, Tiffany began to shine with her in-ring talent especially. Whether it was matches against Lyra Valkyria or Thea Hale, Tiffany was having excellent matches. On top of that, she has an amazing triple jump moonsault, dubbed the prettiest moonsault ever. And this is a great finisher that looks fantastic every time she does it. Tiffany's biggest test came in the form of Becky Lynch when Becky decided to spend some time in NXT. Tiffany lost her title to Becky and while many complained that Becky was burying younger talents, we didn't know at the time that Becky's short title reign was going to do so much for the bright female stars of NXT. This brings me to the main event of NXT No Mercy. Becky defended her title against Tiffany Stratton in an extreme rules match and poor oh, blimey geezer, it was absolutely brilliant. Tiffany went 20 minutes against Becky Lynch and not for a single second did she look out of place. That was not only one of the best female matches of the past year, but it was one of the best main events of the past year. I used to think that Tiffany could have used a year or more in NXT, but after that match, I was convinced that she was ready for main roster and as per reports, so did she. Allegedly, she was clamoring for a place on either Raw or SmackDown and she was right to think she was ready and so far, she has not disappointed. Tiffany made her main roster debut when she appeared in the Women's Royal Rumble match this year at number 29. Later that week, Tiffany signed with SmackDown exclusively and decisively defeated Mia Yim in a short match. 
in just a few weeks, Tiffany was able to get those fans behind her who didn't keep up with her in NXT and didn't know about her in-ring work and promos. She later earned a spot in the Women's Elimination Chamber match and judging by the reaction she got in Perth, Australia, Tiffany is set to reach even greater heights. At the end of the event, Tiffany got a great pop and she was easily the fan favourite of the match. She was so impressive in the match and as soon as she entered the match, the pace really picked up. The crowd reacted to everything she did. There was a swanton bomb from the top of the pod and she even eliminated the returning Naomi. Tiffany for many was easily the best part about the Women's Elimination Chamber match. So much so that fans even chanted bullshit when she got eliminated by Liv Morgan. The intensity she displayed was awesome. Even after the show was over, fans were over the moon with Tiffany's performance and showing their appreciation on social media for her all weekend long. One thing that WWE needs to do right away is feature Tiffany Stratton in major storylines. One that they could easily do at WrestleMania this year is having Tiffany Stratton go up against Bianca Belair. Bianca's got nothing to do at this year's Mania, but there's no way in hell she's not performing on the grandest stage of them all. Having a match against Tiffany Stratton makes sense. Both women can go, they've had interactions on TV, give them enough time to have a great match and that would get fans even more behind Tiffany Stratton. Maybe even put her over. A win over Bianca could elevate Tiffany and Bianca can take a loss. Following Elimination Chamber, fans are now speculating and fantasy booking for Tiffany Stratton to win the Women's Money in the Bank match later this year. As much as I can imagine Tiffany winning that match and debuting a pink briefcase that would fit her Barbie gimmick so well, personally, I think it's too early and she could be an even stronger contender for the briefcase in 2025. But briefcase or no briefcase, this year is definitely Tiffy's time. I was somewhat concerned when Charlotte got injured and I didn't know who was going to be the replacement, the big star replacement on the main roster. WWE opted not to bring back a Sasha Banks because it's almost like they knew they had options. This factory that they have called the Performance Center was spitting out gems. The women's division in NXT is absolutely full of them and the ones coming up to the main roster, i.e. Tiffany Stratton, are ready to fill the boots of big time players. You love to see it. Do you think Tiffany Tiffany Stratton should win the women's money in the bank briefcase or is it too early for her? And talking about money, check out the video on screen to see what I think Mercedes Monet can bring to AEW.